Nematocysts are stinging structures of cnidarian jellyfish and corals. They're the structures that cause the burning stings of <clears throat> contact with a lot of species of jellyfish. They work as a high pressure harpoon, often with venoms at the tip, although they can use sticky stuff at the tip, doesn't have to be venoms. They can be triggered by touch, just pressure that opens sodium stretch channels, by neuronal stimulation, some neurotransmitter triggering it from a neuron or some other chemical signal, such as possibly a ligand from a prey item, something that's a potential prey item. They come in different kinds of structures and shapes, and I'm just going to talk in general about how they shoot out as a harpoon. A lot of the stuff in this video comes from this paper by Christina Hamlet and co-authors. So from their paper, this is an image showing a nematocyst that is closed at the beginning part in which this little cover has popped open. Here it is. And the contents inside are getting um, they're taking up a lot of water and that water is creating pressure that is pushing this part out. And as it goes out, it pushes out a long stalk. I'll show you how that happens. And at the end, you've got this long stalk, often with barbed pieces that notice they come up pointing upward and then they move out sideways as the nematocyst continues to sting. So they would go potentially inside a prey item they puncture through inside a prey item, and then those spines or barbs, and there's some more of them here, uh, will hold the nematocyst in place, and the, the contents or the venom will be pushed into the prey item. So how they develop helps explain how they function. They are an organelle inside a cell. Their outer covering is a modified extracellular matrix. It's a tough extracellular matrix. The inside includes glycosaminoglycans. These are very water attractive molecules. Glycosaminoglycans, GAGs, are a glucose chain, but every second glucose has an amino group. The glucose itself is very hydrophilic. It absorbs water really easily. And the, amon the amino groups also will pick up a lot of water. In addition, some of the contents are a polyglutamic acid. This is a modified amino acid in a long chain. It also absorbs water really well. So let's talk about how they function. To draw one in the simplest way would be to do this. This is going to be the tip. We'll put some, we'll put some venom in here. The venom is technically outside of this part of the pneumatocyst. This is all these gags and polyglutamic acid. When the nematocyst is just sitting here, water can't get in. So all these are water attractive molecules, but water can't get in. When the nematocyst is triggered, it allows water to come in. Could be through aquaporins, could be that little cap that you saw. Moving aside allows water in. So when the water gets in is that this part that I showed inside starts to be pushed out. So as water comes in, that puts pressure on this. This is the only flexible part. All of these walls are very stiff and they can't expand. But this part is flexible. And so this part, starting like this, switches to partially evert, like so, and then more, and more until it's completely everted. What's happened is that this dart, this spiny part, has been pushed out by water pressure, all the water coming in to be attracted to the polyglutamic acid and to the glycosaminoglycans. That has created water pressure. It is pushing against the walls, but they're rigid. The only flexible part is this tube that's down inside and so it pushes that out. It's a very fast process with a lot of force behind it. And so it pushes this sharp part out with a very high pressure and very high rate of speed. Now, what I'm showing is just this little bit to make it simpler to see. But in fact, the inside has got this everted part is all coiled around. And so this thing just keeps unspooling, getting longer and longer. So here is this inside part that's all coiled around here. 
you push out this portion and this long piece just keeps pushing forward. The fluid keeps pushing that tip in further and further and further until the end. That means that any venom that is down here at the tip now winds up on the outside in contact with the prey or a predator that's trying to attack this uh, jellyfish. For packing, it seems that what they do is they remove water from the interior. There's a hypothesis that they replace or cover binding sites for water, places where water is attractive, with calcium. And as the water leaves, the content shrinks. So the idea being that when it's actually made, it's everted. And as the water leaves, as all the binding sites for water are replaced with calcium or perhaps um, covered in some other way, that begins to pull begins to pull this part in until eventually it's completely loaded and ready to go. We've gotten rid of the water. Venom is loaded here within and we're ready for water to come back in. Once water comes in, we'll create the pressure that's going to evert this and stab it into prey. So, once the harpoon is pulled inside the capsule after it's tightly packed, the cap is closed uh, and it's ready to fire. The trigger opens that cap, water can come in, and all of that pressure pushes the contents out. So you might want to sketch this for yourself. The simple version is this, and think about how it works and why it's such an effective weapon.